perhaps have already seen this, but for those who haven't, I'm going to go through it very briefly. So on the left is the HZ, so this year's flagship model. On, the le on, the, on your right, it's the uh, GZ2000, so last year's model. And if you look at this, uh, you should see that the picture is pretty much the same on both of these two sets, uh, which is as it should be. Uh, as you know, film, film content, TV content is all graded in very dark rooms like this. Uh, so the colorist is looking at the TV in you know, perfectly black conditions, and, and this is what they sign off on, basically. The problem is, of course, that consumers, many consumers, it's, it varies by, from country to country, uh, tend to watch content with some lights on, or maybe they're watching it during the daytime, or, you know, it may be not in entirely ideal uh, circumstances. So now, Alex, if you would simulate a normal consumer's room, what happens is that, of course, when the lights come on, your, eye, your pupils contract, which means that the amount of light you can bring is changed, so actually the content looks darker. It hasn't changed, it's still the same concept, it's just like what you're able to process with your eyes changes. Uh, so what we're trying to do, and I'm, just to make it really obvious, I'm going to use the, the flashlight in here, so that, because this room's quite big. So I put this here, you should see that what's happening, happening on the left is that uh, we're reading the ambient light in the room. <laughs> we're also reading the content itself, it's not raising up everything, it, you, you can still see the blacks are still super black, but not, it's not, a, you know, like the old and or ambient sensor type features of the past. It's doing it in an intelligent way. So it reads the content, and so bright scenes, it, it uh, adjusts the, the gamma and the saturation in a certain way, and for darker scenes, it does it in a different way. And it's trying to, as much as possible, perceptually match what you see in a dark room, even though you're in a non-ideal, slightly light environment. And this feature works with uh, HDR10, HDR10+, hybrid low gamma, and SDR. And the other thing to say, of course, is that you know, obviously, we talk a lot about being accurate and respecting the creator's intent. So here, we're clearly changing the picture. But we, what we've tried to do it in a way which is sensitive to the original intention. So actually, we worked a lot with two particular studios. So we invited them over multiple occasions to come to Panasonic Hollywood Lab in order to make sure that the tuning that we're adding to the picture in order to, as I say, perceptually match how you see it in the dark room is as close as possible to that original intent. So we've really gone the extra mile to make sure that this is, you know, as much as possible for the average consumer who doesn't want to, you know, <coughs> worry too much about the settings, just wants to enjoy great picture quality anytime. We've tried to get it as close as possible to, you know, how you would perceptually receive it in, a, uh, in the ideal environment. So this is filmmaker mode of intelligent sensing. So, which I said, you know, it works with everything apart from Dolby Vision. So what happens with Dolby Vision? We'll now change the content to Dolby Vision Source. So Alex, if you would be so kind. Okay, so Dolby Vision. So now we're looking at the film as so again, now in the perfect environment, the environment that it was graded in, these should look almost pretty much the same. I should say, by the way, you can see the projector lights on. Actually, with Dolby Vision IQ, the, the sensor's a little bit more sensitive, so it adjusts a little bit earlier. So you might see a slight difference between the two pictures because of the ambient light. But the, the concept is you know, very, very close. So what they're trying to do with Dolby Vision IQ is to adapt the content according to the amount of ambient light in the room. So Alex, if you could again switch on the lights, please. And again, just to make it really obvious, I'm going to switch, use the, the flashlight on here, so you can see. But again, what it's doing is it's uh, you know, adjusting uh, the picture quality, optimizing it so that you get a very, very close perceptual match to what you would see in a darker room. Again, on the left now, it's very, very dark. Of course, it hasn't changed. It's still the same. It's only your eyes that have changed, and that's what's creating the difference. And so Panasonic, because we support both uh, filmmaker mode of intelligent sensing and also Dolby Vision IQ, we're the only well, because we're the only people with intelligent sensing anyway. So for consumers, it doesn't matter what content they're watching, whether it's Dolby Vision or HDR10, SDR. Uh, it doesn't matter what time of day. It doesn't matter if the room's light, lit or not. If you just put it into these two modes and leave it, you're always going to have, again, for the average consumer, I'm not talking for the super high-end, really enthusiasts who want to watch everything in a perfect environment, but for the, you know, for the large number of average consumers who want to have great picture quality without having to do too much messing around, uh, this is a you know a solution for those guys, and you know this is a, this is a issue that I think we've everybody faces. You know, if you try and watch something in the daytime, for instance, it's almost impossible. So we're just trying to make things a little bit easier for people, but also trying to expand the amount of environments where people can enjoy pretty accurate uh, picture quality at the same time. That's the intention. So that's the two demos here. So now I'm going to show you uh, the new custom panel. So 
So on the right, this is a competitor model, which you're not able to identify what's over. <laughs> uh, and this is the HZ uh, 2000 again. So as you know, there's only one manufacturer of uh, OLED panels. So until now, all OLED panels have been the same. What we've done with this set is that we've actually added our own IP on the back. So actually, as you know, plasmas run really, really hot. So we had a lot of knowledge, know-how of how to deal with that. So we've added some, well, basically a lot of heatsink technology. So it's sucking a lot of that heat away from the screen. And the more heat that you're able to remove away, it gives you more headroom to boost the brightness that much further. So actually, I think if you look in these specular highlights in particular, and inside, you know, I think it should be quite obvious that this is much brighter. Uh, and the, you know, the base, uh, the actual outcome of what we've done is that we're able to achieve 20% higher peak brightness, but also 20% higher average brightness as well. Eh? So it really is, you know, up until now, all OLED panels might have been the same, but that's no longer the case. Eh? With this guy, it's clearly something different. And it's a hardware difference as well. Eh? It's, you know, delivering something that nobody else is able to deliver at the moment. And I think especially the HDR picture quality, because the blacks are so black, having that little bit of extra headroom in terms of brightness at the top, it really adds something to uh, content and the way you perceive it. So we're very happy with it. Can you all see the difference? Mm. Great. Okay. So, I've, sorry, I've run through that because of time, but we're going to hand over now to Glenn Fremantle, who is the Academy Award winning uh, sound designer. Uh, he's going to talk a little bit about uh, Dolby Atmos uh, and how he mixes the content. And then at the end, we're going to come back here and if you have any questions, we should just see these back on and you can film and take photos or whatever you want to do.